solar energy, the history and future. Prepared by Jason Korob, Jonathan Evans, Stephen Gifford, Sean Roseman, Ryan Holmes, and Mark Daniels. So what's so great about solar energy? Let me break it down for you. In direct sun, you can produce about 100 watts of solar energy per square foot. If you assume 12 hours of sun per day, this equates to 438,000 watt hours per square foot per year. Based on about 28 million square feet per square mile, sunlight bestows a whopping 12.2 trillion watt hours per square mile per year. With these assumptions, figuring out how much solar energy hits the entire planet is relatively simple. 12.2 trillion watt hours converts to about 12,000 gigawatt hours, and based on 8,760 hours per year by 197 million square miles of the Earth's surface, that includes the oceans, the Earth receives about 274 million gigawatt years of solar energy. Phew! This translates to an astonishing 8.2 million quads of BTU energy per year. The entire human race currently uses about 400 quads of energy in all forms per year. Put another way, the solar energy hitting the Earth's Earth exceeds the total energy consumed by humanity by a factor of over 20,000 times. That's a lot of sustainable energy. Before we dive into the business applications and challenges of solar energy, we feel it's appropriate to share a little more information on the history of solar energy. In 1767, a Swiss scientist named Horace Benedict created the first <coughs> solar co collector. It was an insulated box covered with three layers of glass to absorb heat energy. His box became widely known as the first solar oven. The next innovation was in 1883. In 1883, the first solar cell was introduced. The cell was to be wrapped with selenium wafers. Then, in 1958, Solar power was used to power space exploration equipment, such as satellites and space stations. This was the first commercial use of solar energy. Now jumping to 1970, there was major discussion about the efficiency of solar cells and the reduction of costs. Up to that time, the efficiency of the solar cells was only about 14%. It was not comparable to the high cost of producing those cells. In 1970, Exxon Corporation designed an efficient solar panel which was less costly to manufacture. This was a major milestone in the history of solar energy. In 1977, the U.S. government embraced the use of solar energy by launching the Solar Energy, energy Research Institute. Other governments across the world soon followed. Now, most recently, in 2012, we have seen enormous investment in utility-scale solar plants. With records, for the largest frequent, with records for the largest frequently being broken. As of 2012, the largest solar energy plant was the Golmud Solar Park in China, with an installed capacity of 200 megawatts. This, however, was recently surpassed by India's Gujarat Solar Park, a collection of solar farms scattered around the Gujarat region, boasting a combined installed capacity of 605 megawatts. Now that you have a sense for the history, we're going to move on to the technology that makes solar energy possible. Here's a short video clip describing the primary solar technology called photovoltaic. PV cells have at least two layers of semiconductors. One that's positively charged and one that's negatively charged. When the light shines on the semiconductor, the electric field across the junction between these two layers causes electricity to flow. The greater the intensity of light, the greater the flow of electricity. All right. So the next question that we had was how much sunlight energy does a photovoltaic or PV cell absorb? Unfortunately, not an awful lot. In 2006, for example, most solar panels only reached efficiency levels of about 12 to 18 percent. Since the... <coughs> Since the, the light that hits a solar cell has photons of a wide range of energies, it turns out that some of them won't have enough energy to produce current flow. They'll simply pass through a cell as if it were transparent. Only a certain amount of energy measured in electron volts is required to knock an electron loose. If a photon has more energy than the required amount, then the extra energy is lost. 
This accounts for the loss of about 70% of the radiation energy uh, that shows us the inefficiencies. There have been a lot of developments in the design of solar cell technology. This chart shows an industry map of the companies engaged in growing this exciting technology and industry since 1975. Issues concerning cost effectiveness have spurred endless research efforts aimed at developing and fine-tuning new ways to make solar panels. Traditional PV panels based on crystalline silicon structures such as monocrystalline and polycrystalline silicone have gradually improved in efficiency over time, reaching efficiencies around 27%. Multi-junction solar cells are solar cells containing several layers. Each layer is tuned to a different wavelength of light, reducing one of the largest inherent sources of losses and thereby increasing efficiencies. Currently, the best traditional silicon solar cells have efficiencies around 25%. While lab examples of multi-junction cells have demonstrated performance of 44%. However, this efficiency is gained at the cost of increased complexity and manufacturing price. Traditional solar technology is beginning to encounter, encounter competition from emerging and rapidly evolving technologies such as thin film, solar, and organic cells. The hope is that these new technologies will rapidly increase in efficiency and decrease the cost at the same time. So what about the business applications? Come with me as we explore San Francisco. <clears throat> uh, first, it's important to understand the size of the market. The United States uses 29 trillion kilowatt hours of energy each year. Each year. Unfortunately, only 314 million kilowatt hours of that energy consumption is from solar energy. Put to scale, that is only 0.001% of all our energy needs. However, solar energy has the potential to produce 400 trillion kilowatt hours per year. If the sun is so rich in, in energy, it begs the question, why aren't we using more solar energy? There are two primary reasons. The first is cost. Solar energy is about twice as costly to produce as coal and about 50% more expensive than natural gas. In 2007, it was 38 cents per kilowatt hour to produce, and now in 2010, you can see there have, been, there have actually been a lot of decreases, and it's now only 8 cents to produce. The other reason is solar intermittency. It is difficult to store and discharge the energy needs during non-daylight hours. Also, if the sun isn't shining, we are not harvesting solar energy. The good news and why we are opti optimistic about solar energy is that things are changing and the future looks bright. It becomes less costly to produce solar energy as you can see in this graph and by 2020 it will be uh, at a low point. Moreover, many areas in the United States have tremendous potential for solar energy. This map shows exactly where solar energy will work best. Okay, so let's just switch gears for a minute and talk about the current usage options. The first usage option is a standard utility setup. Governments are producing massive PV farms that can produce hundreds of megawatts of electricity and are selling it to residential and commercial customers just like any other energy source. Another usage option is individual, uh, individual person or company owned PV arrays placed on personal or business property. The individual or business is generally responsible for maintenance. The third usage option is the Solar City business model. Solar City is a company that owns the solar panels and installs it on personal property and sells the customers the energy. In the Solar City model, the company does the maintenance of the solar panels. So what does the future look like? As costs continue to drop, we anticipate expanding market penetration in the United States. The Solar City business model will grow in residential areas as costs go down, especially in states like California and Nevada where energy costs are high and there is great potential for solar energy. As solar energy becomes less expensive, we expect to see increased competition amongst energy suppliers. General Electric and other companies are exploring solar energy potential. As costs decrease, there will be more suppliers and increased competition. We believe the number of companies will consolidate and a few key players will emerge. Although at this time a dominant design has not yet emerged, we expect that due to, the, due to competition, a dominant design for panels will occur at some point in the future. We feel there is a tremendous opportunity for solar through global adoption. As shown on this map, the earth is ripe for solar energy harvesting. 
In fact, if we were to just cover 4% of the world's desert area with existing PV panels, this farm would supply enough energy to quench the world's electricity needs. The sunlight over the Gobi Desert alone could supply almost all of the world's solar energy demands. So in conclusion, what we've learned is there's amazing potential for solar energy. It is currently the most sustainable form of energy. Solar energy is the source of all other energies and will remain so until the sun burns out. The cost for solar energy will continue to, to decrease. In order, f in, in order for widespread adoption, solar technology will have to outpace other low-cost energy alternatives like fracking. That being said, we can truly, if we can truly harness the power of the sun, the world will truly, will truly become uh, energy independent.